The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light? Sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, Doctor, regarding these two clans from Medina, uh, as you've mentioned that um, they've both been fighting each other for many, many years. How many years approximately? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin wa la'anatullah ala a'da'ihim ajma'in. Allahumma salam Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Um, yes, it is said that there have been uh, um, scholars in you know, say that they they have been fighting one another for over 120 years. That's a lot. That's a, that's that's a huge sev- period. That's, that's a, several generations. You're talking about Subhanallah. Uh, three or four generations. What, why? What, what, the, what started? Just to get a bit of a background knowledge regarding these two clans. What was the issue? Do we know? Um, uh, th- there are various things, but wh- whatever they are, mm. they, uh, they were... Um, 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 Nothing worthy of okay. such a paying such a cost, you know, fighting and spending okay. all the energy and and it is said that um, they used to fight one another, and this was although there were peaks and there were if you if you like uh, the the war or the battles used to come down, but uh, it is stated that we used to we never used to lay down our arms. So they had a day vendetta, and night. constant vendetta between each other. Unfortunately. Okay. All right. So basically, so, and what <coughs> they, what they used to do, we used to have people from us coming to Mecca, making alliance alliance with Quraysh, yeah. so that they could support them okay. against Khazraj. And we had people from Khazraj coming to Mecca, making alliance with different people of Quraysh, different clans of Quraysh, so that they could he- get help and support to fight against okay. uh, uh, us. Um, it stated that. Um, People came from Aus uh, to Mecca is, as one of the things and um, um, to make alliances with Quraysh and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, so to make alliances with Quraysh so that they could fight Khazraj. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, this, there was a, a, a battle which happened to be the last battle. Um, the battle called um, Ba'ath. Um, it was at the area or the or fortress near the fortress belonging to the Aus, um called uh, Boaz, and um, they came to a group of them came to Mecca to make alliances. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi heard about them, heard that some people from Medina have come, and he made sure that he found out where they they are staying. He made sure to go and visit them. He went and spoke to them, and he said, "I am the messenger of Allah." And I want you to give me support uh, so that I can convey my message to the people. Hmm. Um, it is said that um, amongst them was uh, a young man called Iyas ibn Ma'ad. And uh, he was from Aus. And as I said, they had come to seek help from Mecca, from Quraysh. And uh, he spoke to them. Iyas, a young man, he was impressed. There were others uh, uh, along with him. He started talking about this. When, they, when the meeting finished with, with the Prophet Sallallahu they started talking. They went to do tawaf so that they could go back. And it is said that his companion says, stop talking about him. Uh, you, uh, and one of them, he said, they got some dust from sand from the, uh, mm. from the ground and uh, uh, threw it, it, it at his face. He said, you must stop talking about this. And they were concerned. He said, we're here to, on a different business, we're here to get help from Quraysh and go back. Um, it is said that they went back, but he, he remained. Apparently, he confided with some of his uh, close friends or relatives in, in Medina that 
he has become Muslim. But anyway, he continued in that battle of Boaz and he was killed in Boaz. Next season, a group from Khazraj came to Mecca, seeking help, um, trying to make alliances with uh, uh, some people of Quraysh against us. There were two people. <coughs> there were two people who are mentioned by name, As'ad ibn Zurara and the Quran ibn Abd Qais. <coughs> The, uh, and they, they were talking about. They were talking with someone called Utbah ibn Rubaya, um, in, from Quraysh, and he said, "They said, you know, give us help with this, with us, and so on." Because they were preoccupied, Quraysh was preoccupied with Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This time, they weren't so enthusiastic about this, and Rubaya said to Asad <coughs> ibn Ma ibn Zurara <coughs> that. Um, you know, you're far away from us, and we're already preoccupied. We've got someone who's causing us a lot of headache. <coughs> he's one of us. He's rebelled against us. He's come up with, own, with his own religion. And they said, who is he? Where is he? He said, um, <coughs> he's Muhammad ibn Abdullah, uh, ibn Abdul Muttalib. And at the moment, he is in Hijr Ismail, because during the Hajj season, he used to come and Hijr Ismail belonged to Abdul Muttalib, uh, Bani Abdul Muttalib, so they had sanctity if you like there. And you know, as I had mentioned before, during the Hajj season, they didn't approach and didn't cause too much problem for uh, Bani Hashim and the Prophet because it would be bad for their reputation. <coughs> and he said to him, he only comes out of the Sha'b, uh, Sha'b Abi Talib or the Valley of Talib uh, during the Hajj season or the Umrah season, and he's in Hajj. But the thing is, don't approach him. Mm. Don't listen to him. He said, but I'm going to do tawaf. He said, okay, put some cotton wool in your ears so that you don't hear him. Interesting. He's a magician. You know, yeah. you might be influenced, you might be charmed mm. by his spell. So <laughs> whatever you do, don't speak to him. So as Adib bin Zarara did that, he, he got some cotton wool, put it in his ears. He went to do the tawaf. He saw him. He saw the Prophet he was sitting, his head down. And he approached, he said, um, uh, Good morning. <clears throat> and um, the Prophet raised his head and he said, Allah has replaced this greeting with the greeting of Ahl Jannah. He said, what is that? He said, Salamun Alaikum. SubhanAllah. <clears throat> he said, what do you have to say? Um, he said, I am a messenger from Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I invite people and invite you uh, to declare that there is no Allah, but there is no God but Allah, and that I am his messenger. And... He said, what do you have to say? He recited these verses, which I recited earlier. He was taken aback. And he recited another verse of the Quran. He was very impressed. He said to him, when he listened to the uh, uh, verses of the Quran, and he said, my God, we are fighting. We are killing, and we are cousins. We've been killing one another for the last century. Because Aus and Khazraj, the actual individuals, Aus and Khazraj, were mm -hmm. brothers. From the same father and from the same mother. And now their descendants, after 120 years, are enormous. But of course they are killing one another. Yeah. And now he says, Be kind to one another. Be kind to your relatives. Be kind to your parents. He said to him, this is such a beautiful thing. This is totally contrary to what we've been doing. He said, then, if that is the case, then you should believe in me. He said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasul. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, subhanallah. Okay, so. He said. Yeah, uh, so, uh, please. He said, I need to go and I have, I have a friend. 
allow me to go and bring him. He said, okay. The Prophet sallallahu he went to Laquan ibn Abd Qais. He explained to him what, what happened. He said, you, sh you should come and listen to him, uh, to this man. And this, we have come to seek help from Quraysh. He's talking, as, uh, <coughs> he's talking to the Quran, as Adam bin Zarara is talking to the Quran. He said, we've come here to seek uh, help from Quraysh so that we go back mm -hmm. to Medina and kill one another. Yeah. And listen to what he has to say. He said, he said that the Quran came and he listened and he said the Shahada as well. SubhanAllah. And he said to him, <coughs> this is very important. He said to him, the Quran said um, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, We've been hearing about you from the Jewish scholars in Medina. We have a lot of Jews in Medina who have, and they have been telling us that a prophet will come uh, who will be in Medina, who uh, will appear in Mecca, mm. but he will migrate to Medina. We would like you to make your home to make our city your home. And we, want, we would like you to... Uh, this is the beginning of the relationship of Rasulullah with Yathrib. This is the beginning. Which this was renamed to uh, Medina al-Munawwara. Yes, that's right. So, but, but the thing is, the Jewish, uh, we've mentioned this uh, before, the Jewish scholars were though informing the people of a prophet of that era, but they expected him to be a Jew, not an Arab, correct? Um, obviously, they had come to an Arab place. Because of the narrations they Because had. of the narrations that the, 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 the scholar, knew where he would appear. The, the Prophet will appear in Mecca and will reside in Medina. That's why there were many uh, Jewish settlements, if you like, or Jewish scholars in Medina and in Mecca. As I mentioned earlier on, that uh, uh, there were <coughs> Jewish scholars in Mecca. Mm. They told Sayyidah Khadija, alayhi salam, um, well before their marriage, um, that uh, when when they saw Sayyid Khadija, uh, they saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa the young Muhammad working for Khadija, or or he, he is working uh, with her in in the trade and so on. One of the Jewish scholars in Mecca said to her that he will be a, he will be the Prophet. The Jews, the scholars, the Jew, yeah, the did Jewish they support scholars. the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa Le some did, some didn't. Okay, some did. So, so <laughs> those who did obviously embraced Islam yes. and became Muslims. Yes. Those who didn't, mm. eventually, they still stayed in Medina. Or they af after after they found out that the, the prophet who uh, proclaimed prophethood was an Arab, not a Jew, and they rejected him, did they leave, or did they stay in Medina? They, 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 we'll come back into that when they okay. make, they made okay. pact and and, and uh, okay. peace treaty, if you like, or, or covenant, Inshallah. rather than peace okay. treaty. B back with, to with, with it, with it. back to um, so the tribe of Khazraj. Yes, they said we've uh, uh, the Quran said to him that we've heard about you, a prophet from the Jewish scholars in Medina, mm -hmm. and th this has been going on for a long time. Almost everyone in Medina knows has heard from the Jewish scholars that there will be a prophet from Mecca. And I think we, this, this, you are the one. And uh, subhanAllah, they said, we had come to um, uh, Mecca to seek help and make alliances from Quraysh, to seek help from Quraysh so that we could go, go back and fight. Allah has given us something even better. Peace. Which is peace and given us you. SubhanAllah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. They asked, they said, we're going back. We're going to inform. But um, we want you to send someone who is more learned than us mm. um, so that we can invite our people to Islam because there's hardly anyone who hasn't heard about the forthcoming Prophet, who hasn't heard about the Prophet from the Jewish scholars in Medina. So uh, we would like you uh, to send someone with us mm. so that he can teach us more. And the Prophet asked Mus'ab, a young man, mm -hmm. a young man called Mus'ab ibn Umair um, to go with them, with these two people, 
uh, back to Medina. Okay, and who, who was this person? Mus'ab. Mus'ab. Mus'ab ibn Umair was a Meccan young man. His, his parents were rather well off. Wealthy. They were, they were very, very wealthy. So he was from the um, wealthy community of the Quraysh. If you like, he was from the wealthy community. He, he was living, a, 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 if you like, a posh lifestyle. It is said that he used to wear, you know, very expensive shirts. And he was very meticulous about his mm. uh, look and his ho outfit and what have you. And um, when he heard, obviously he was m m from Mecca and the Prophet was Meccan. Uh, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. one way or another he heard about the message of, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and he embraced Islam Alhamdulillah. Okay. and when, they, when he did that his parents were having none of that shame so, so they they, um, they had disowned him they disowned him they had nothing to do with him mm. and they were very upset to the extent that when um, Bani Hashim were surrounded in Sha'b Abi Talib or were um, f trying to force them to give up the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so that Quraysh could kill him. Hmm. And of course they refused. Um, Bani Hashim, and in, at that time Bani Hashim still there were people who had believed in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and there were people who didn't. Okay. If you like they were kuffar, but they were Bani Hashim and out of loyalty of their tribe members, they would still protect They would not the betray him. They wouldn't betray him. They still protect him. Okay. During that season, because Mus'ab ibn Umayyah had nowhere, nowhere else to go, mm. he lived with Bani Hashim in the, in the valley, in, in the valley, in Sha'b Abi Talib. And of course, things were very hard. And he found it even harder because he lived a very of course, uh, comfortable yeah. lifestyle. He wasn't used to the hardship. He wasn't used to the hardship. Um, one or two years passed by and he was, it is said that he was um, uh, suffering probably more than others. When this happened, and other than that, he, uh, Mus'ab ibn Umair was very enthusiastic and he, ha he knew um, numerous verses of the Qur'an. And he, he was well versed with the verses and also with the teachings of, the, uh, of, of Islam, uh, teaching of the Prophet sallallahu so he was a good candidate. Um, uh, he was very loyal to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As I said, he he was prepared to give up all that lifestyle and live in extreme hardship in Sha'b Abi Talib with with the Bani Hashim. The sacrifice is made for Allah subhanahu wa taala and His Holy Prophet. You know, for because he he Do really you, believed in Islam. Really not. And th this is not easy. People who give Definitely. up a very comfortable lifestyle and, and come and not only live in very uh, 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 harsh. Uh, uh, circumstances, which is Sha'b ibn Talib, um, where food was scarce, water was scarce, um, but um, uh, they were in danger. Anyway, but he's, uh, Mus'ab ibn Umayr stuck to his guns and he kept, um, uh, he stayed with Islam even though his, his parents disowned him. Okay. Uh, so he was well versed with the verses of the Quran, he knew a lot of the Quran and, uh, he, and the teaching of them. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa appointed Mus'ab to go with them to uh, Medina, okay. which of course they did. So what what happened? He went to Medina, and what was the response from the people? So he approached the people first. Did he go to the clans? What was the issue between the two clans uh, solved? What happened? What happened was he um, <coughs> he stayed with Asad ibn Zurara, one of these two people <coughs> from the tribe of. Uh, Hazraj. He stayed with them. We, as I said, we had the Quran ibn Abd Qais yeah. and Asad ibn Zurara. They were enthusiastic. They, they, came, they became Muslim. They came and told their people about what happened. Yeah. And the, the people, because they had heard so much from the Jewish scholars of Medina about the Prophet, yeah. so they were, if you like, they were ready for it. Okay. And when they saw senior members of Khazraj, that is As'ad and the Quran, they had embraced Islam. Okay, so that, that was a, a milestone. That was the first step. Yeah, say. that was the first step, and an important first step. That was a milestone. Mm -hmm. It broke the ice for the rest to for, follow. For the rest of So it is said that um, he used to, there was a, 
obviously, as, if you like, a central well or a pool connected to a well where they had, um, um, it was a water source for them, which of course water is extremely important. Um, um, he, every day he used to come by this well and by this uh, pool, and the youth of Khazraj and the youth of Medina, they used to come and listen to him. They were highly impressed by Mus'ab ibn Zawair. The word spread. And as As'ad ibn uh, uh, Zurara said, mm. my uncle Khali, that is the brother of my mother, is a, is a tribal chief. He's called Sa'ad ibn Ma'az. He said that if, if you talk to him, now this is in the, pres in the presence by this well side, if you like, in the presence of the, all the youth of Khazraj, he said, if you, spoke, if you speak to him and he embraces Islam, that's it. It's finished. And um, he said that he, As'ad, had come to the vicinity of the, uh, of the well. And then um, he spoke to one of his companions by the name of Usaid ibn Hudayr. And he said, I have heard that <coughs> someone has come from Mecca and he is corrupting our youth. <laughs> and Sa'ad ibn Ma'ad, the uncle of As'ad ibn Zurara, he said, um, ask uh, Usaid ibn Khudayr to go and put a stop to all that. So Usaid ibn uh, uh, Hudayr came where um, uh, Mus'ab ibn Zubair was speaking to the youth and he said um, you should put a stop to all this. You didn't listen to him or he wasn't interested? <coughs> um, I mean before, before he went and told uh, Mus'ab to stop did he, did he give him a chance? Did he hear what he, uh, Mus'ab had to say? Yes, he said, Mus'ab said to him if you just sit down Listen to me. Mm. If you're convinced, well, fine. If not, then I'll stop. Okay. That's very fair. He sat down. Now, this was, if you like, kind of the second in command, Usaid ibn Hudayr. As far as Khazraj was concerned, one of the important figures was the uncle of Sa'ad ibn Surara mm. by the name of Sa'ad ibn Ma'ad. So basically, Mus'ad has uh, reached. Uh, breathed into the leadership of if the like, tribe. Yes, important figures. Yes. And he sat down. And he read some of the verses of the Quran. And as I said, because of the content of the verses and the eloquence and beauty of the uh, um, verses, he was impressed. He said, Recite for me more. He recited. Proper Arabic, pure Arabic, and they, yes. are, they were Arabs. There were no problem. There's so no they religion. understood perfectly the message. What does Islam say? This, this. Salah, Salam, Kana. Yes. Oh, were those rules already? The ru yes, of course. Um, Islam said, this is haram, this is good, this is bad. And so on. Okay. So did not, sorry, when, when did, um, for example, the wajibat, when did they come first in place? Was it Mecca or Medina? Well, they're both, they're, this is a different subject. Okay. Let's, let's concentrate on this. Okay. I don't know how much time we have. Okay. Um, <coughs> and um, he listened to all, to all these. He looked around. He said, what do I have to do to enter this religion? <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh, and Mus'ab said to him that تغتسل, you make a ghusl and you wear uh, clean clothes and you declare the shahada and pray to Raqqa. It is said that um, Usaid ibn um, Hudayr, he jumped into the pool with his own clothes. <laughs> he jumped into the pool, if you like. Um, so he uh, dived into the pool. He came out uh, and, he quenched, he, uh, uh, and he said, um, um, I will wear clean clothes. I want to say the shahada. And he said the shahada in front of all the people. He said the shahada, the two shahada. Um, and he wore clean clothes and he came and prayed. Uh, 
And then they ask him, what are you going to do about the chief? He said, leave it to me. I'll try to go and talk to him, convince him that he comes and listens to you. Um, it is said that when he approached um, uh, Sa'ad ibn Ma'ad, it is said that he said, before even he spoke, he said that, أقسم أن أسيد أو سيدا رجع إلينا بغير الوجه الذي ذهب عنا. He was a different man. He was a different man. Now this was even before he he spoke. So he said, I invite you that you go and listen to him. You either take it or leave it. It will do you no harm. And so سعد بن معاذ went. by the pool side and uh, he asked <coughs> Mus'ab ibn Umair to recite some of the verses of the Quran and Mus'ab recited Ha'mim Ha'mim Tanzeelu min Rahman al-Rahim Kitabun Fussalat Ayatih um, uh, Fussalat is, means ranks, correct? No, Fussalat means explained or oh, explained described Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ha'mim تنزل من الرحمن الرحيم كتاب فصلت آياته قرآنا عربيا لقوم يعلمون. It is a revelation from Allah سبحانه وتعالى, the merciful, the compassionate. It is a book whose verses have been explained and clarified, yeah, in Arabic for people who comprehend. So this was extremely important. Mus'ab ibn Umair, Mus'ab ibn Umair says, Wallah, ra'ayna al-Islam fi wajhi qabla an yatakallam. By Allah, we saw Islam in his face before he even spoke. This Sa'ad bin Ma'ad. Subhanallah. So he embraced Islam. He said, what do I have to do? He said to them, Ghusl, you wear clean garments, you declare the shahada, and uh, you pray to Raqqa. And um, he did that. He didn't jump in the pool this time. Mm. Okay? So he went and did the ghusl. He wore clean garments. And he came, he declared the shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he prayed to Raqqa um, according. So, you know, all the people around were very happy. It is said that he went, if you like, to the city center or wherever that they wanted to make declaration. And he said, I call upon every man, woman, and child, okay, to gather around me. With no exception. I want you all... The whole tribe to whole participate. Tribe. So he waited for everyone... Everyone gathered. <coughs> and he said to them, Who am I? And what am I? They said, You're, you're the chief. You're our leader. And uh, we, uh, we are loyal to you. And we obey your commands. This is what you are and this is who you are. Tell us what you want. And he said, I don't want to hear anything from you unless you declare the shahada that there is no God but Allah and, there is, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Which was something extremely significant. Um, and it is said that there was not a single household except that there was a, at least a male or a female Muslim in that household. SubhanAllah. Okay. So. That's the beginning of Medina. That's the beginning of Medina. People became Muslim. Not every single one. Mm -hmm. They had to think. Okay. And there was no force or coercion. Even though the chief yeah. of, of Khazraj was asking them that I, I want you to, to do that. 
still the, it wasn't absolute that everyone uh, accepted uh, Islam. It says that there was not a single household except there is at least one male or female Muslim or Muslim mm -hmm. in, uh, in that household. So this is how, if you like, um, the um, Medina embraced Islam, accepted Islam. Um, and the ease that the people of Medina accepted Islam is because of the um, uh, presence of the Jewish scholars and because uh, that the Jewish scholars were telling them, they al awan. it's about time, they used to tell them before. It's about time that uh, a prophet appears. He's, he's, he appears in Mecca, but he will migrate to Medina. He will migrate to, the, or, to your city. Uh, that was the reason that it was, uh, they accepted, embraced Islam so easily, relatively easily. Um, uh, at least by reciting few verses of the Quran or a, a, a complete chapter of the Quran, uh, the chiefs accepted Islam. Um, and um, which is something uh, significant. Once the chief, as uh, As'ad ibn Zurara has said, once my, my uncle accepts Islam, then we're, we're, we're sorted. Uh, and of course, uncle accepted Islam. He called upon everyone to accept Islam. Some of them did. Well, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, and, and we see the peace between the two clans after alhamdulillah, there was peace. so many years. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Reveal this ayah. When there was peace, a good thing you mentioned that. Mm. Um, reveal this ayah. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنُ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانَ Remember the, um, the mercy and the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you that he, while you were enemies one another, Allah harmonized between your hearts and you brought your hearts closer together and you became brothers again. Okay, so there was, uh, that's why the battle of Bu'ath, which was raging um, uh, until recently, was the last battle between Aws and Khazraj. Um, and uh, Mus'ab wrote to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi wa oh. remind me, I would say Mus'ab, as I said, he was a very uh, loyal Muslim and he was uh, killed in the battle of Uhud. Allah. In the battle of Uhud, uh, uh, he was martyred and uh, uh, when the, uh, during the second wave of attack headed by Khalid bin Walid uh, Mus'ab bin Umair um, was killed in that, uh, in that attack in the battle of Uhud uh, you have 40 chiefs um, of 40 clans so from each clan one warrior comes okay and they simultaneously they attack the house or attack him simultaneously with a single blow so all of them each of them say, give them so that they don't say this was the first one this was the, this warrior was the last one no uh, simultaneously they strike at uh, muhammad and kill him uh, with a single blow so that uh, and if 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 bani hashim decide to fight the tribes or the clans of the killers, they will have to fight 40 clans. And that will be something impossible for them to do. Mm -hmm.